ChatGPT, Gemini Claude, and Llama. These are the big dogs, the El Jefes of artificial intelligence, and they're literally reshaping the digital landscape as we speak. Now, we're all eager to answer the burning questions, which is most useful today, and which one should I choose to be my AI assistant for my next work project? Well, in this video, I'll put each of these models through their paces with four different prompts from easy mode to scorchingly hard, and we'll break down their strengths, expose their weaknesses, and reveal which AI assistant could be your next go-to tool and the dominant AI model once and for all. Okay, so let's start with a simple email prompt. We'll be using MagEye, which allows me to have access to all of the different AI models in this one browser so that I don't have to go to different areas and have multiple subscriptions. And the first tool we're going to be using is ChatGPT 4.0, which has a number of tokens and a certain number of multipliers. Now, what's really cool about MagEye is we can also select a chat persona. And so we'll just be using the expert copywriter persona for this email prompt. So the prompt for this email is draft an email to notify employees about an upcoming company meeting, including the date, time and agenda. So let's see what ChatGPT does for us here. Okay, so interesting. My first impressions is that ChatGPT came up with a good subject. And it also has some arbitrary dates that are yeah, they're just hypothetical. I love that it identifies that we're talking to the team here. And I mean, this is pretty simple email, so there's not much to talk about here. The agenda seems like an actual agenda I would use if I were to uh, lead a meeting, you know, talk about collaboration or upcoming projects. So just highlighting some of the things that I would want to talk about. For the most part, you know, simple email, pretty good. Has a note here. To go to our website which is probably not something we would do with company members and employees so that's a bit strange but for the most part i think it did a decent job with the email all right so i'm changing the ai model to claude so first impression here claude is a bit more corporate um what i do appreciate though is that it not only gave uh, an arbitrary time or hypothetical time here but it also indicated the end time and the location, which was not included in the prompt, which is, you know, kind of cool so that I could just go in and just replace that if there was an actual conference room or another room that the meeting was going to be held or if it was going to be virtual, you know, that would be cool as well. The agenda, the formatting is a bit different, but I'm not sure if that's MagEye or if it's actually Claude itself. So we'll see that when we test the other AI models and uh, for the most part did a pretty good job okay so next up we're gonna go with gemini pro 1.5 so this is really interesting so for one the subject line is a bit more witty and fun here with gemini and the other thing i'm noticing off the bat is that instead of using arbitrary dates or hypothetical dates it's actually using placeholders which i'm gonna say i actually prefer here so I'm going to award a point to Gemini for that. So what I can appreciate about Gemini is that it's very refined and very concise, not too much, you know, fluff, and it has the placeholders. So I think I'm actually preferring Gemini on this particular prompt here. Okay, so I'm going to go with Llama here, Llama 3. Okay, so initial impressions of Llama. What I do appreciate about Llama initially is it also has the location as well. And just like Gemini, it has placeholders for the location here. Um, it did kind of give me like a hypothetical agenda, but the formatting is much better than it was with Cloud, where the bullet points just weren't aligned in this format. So if I were to rank these AI models on this particular prompt for easy mode, I would say that Gemini would be the top, so gets a score of four, Llama three, then uh, ChatGPT 2, and then Claude 1. Next up, we'll see how our AI assistant handle summarizing a well-known book. And so I've chosen the first chapter of Atomic Habits, of course, it's one of my favorites, by James Clare. And it's a fantastic book on habit formation and productivity. I'm going to upload an excerpt from the first chapter, and our task for the AI models is to summarize the key findings and implications from this book. Let's see how well these models can condense this information into a clear and concise summary. Okay, so let's take a look at what ChatGPT spit out for me here and just my first impressions on reading it. I think it is pretty concise. I mean, it's not a difficult exit to create a summary for. What I will say is that when I looked at the chapter summary that was in the book by the author, 
it's very similar to what I have here with the key findings, mentioning things about, you know, small changes leading to significant compounding improvements and things of that nature. All right, so let's look at Claude Sonnet and pretty much, you know, did a good job in terms of the findings. What I'm noticing is that it didn't have the headlines to kind of like give a, a short phrase summary. And so I'm going to have to go through and kind of read each thing to see. So I do like when there's a little bit of like a, a headline. So let me know to summarize even just the key finding point. I did like that ChatGPT did that. Okay, time for Gemini Pro to take its place. So Gemini took a different approach here. For one, it gave me a sort of a headline here. And then it doesn't give as much key takeaways. It kind of summarizes it very much into a concise two point setup here. And I don't know, it felt a bit lacking, but at the same time, I do like that it has a more concise, refined approach to it. I think I just want a little bit more from the AI model and on the summary. Um, I don't really get much of the implications in here as I did with Claude. I think I would prefer a little bit more like from what I got with uh, Claude and ChatGPT. Okay, so let's take a look at what Llama has for us here. And initially off the bat, what I'm recognizing is it also has those headlines for different sections, the key findings. I do like that. So it makes it easier for me to consume where I can just look at the headline and I know what to expect for that portion. So if I have to rank it, I will put Llama at number four and then I'd go to maybe Claude at three, ChatGPT at one, and then unfortunately we have Gemini Pro at one point. All right, for our next challenge, we're going to ask the AI models to find contractors with expertise in SEO for a SaaS company on LinkedIn. Let's see how it performs. Well, well, well. So this is kind of expected here. Uh, ChatGPT is having some difficulty in being able to search LinkedIn profiles for particular contractors on its own. So it's kind of given me a synopsis of how to go about doing it. So as you can see, it says how to search for SEO experts on LinkedIn for any SaaS company, you know, using parameters and things of that nature, how to save profiles. Um, it does kind of give me an example of a list that I should be looking for um, in a spreadsheet, but uh, this isn't what I'm looking for. Let's see if the other AI models can get it done. Okay, so we tried it with Claude Sonnet, and this is even worse in my opinion. Claude actually gave me a list of profiles, but these are fake profiles. I did my due diligence to kind of look at which of these are actually real profiles on LinkedIn, and none of them were. Some of them were like MD names of persons who are not even in SEO field. So Claude, yeah, this is a no-go. This, this doesn't fly. <laughs> With Gemini Pro, we're getting a similar response to ChatGPT where it's saying that, you know, based on its privacy guidelines, it's unable to scrape information from websites, including LinkedIn. So that would be a breach of their terms and services using Gemini to do such a thing. So what I do notice about Gemini is that it is giving me additional tips just like ChatGPT to, you know, get LinkedIn Premium or join SaaS groups on LinkedIn to find more persons who might be able to take on the task. Okay, so I'm a little bit impressed with Llama here. This is where Llama seems to really shine because it is giving me actual profiles of persons who are on LinkedIn. Not only is it linking their profile, which I did valid and check that these are real profiles, but it's also giving me their email. Now I'll have to validate if that is actually true, which I probably won't get to because I'm not going to like email these persons and get a response, but it does have their past experience. It scraped that information and it's really just giving me everything that I need here <laughs> and, and more. It gave me a revised list of persons who might be able to fit for my particular niche, which is SaaS companies. Okay. So in terms of rankings for this particular use case, I'm going to rank Llama at number four and then ChatGPT number three, Gemini number two. And I almost want to give a zero score for Claude because it was just erroneous information. They weren't real profiles. It's just so deceitful. Come on, Claude, do better than that. As we just saw, while they gave some results, it's clear that navigating through the sea of potential contractors can be a quite challenging task, even for these smart models. But for tasks such as these, I would use Magical, an automation tool powered by AI tech that can be made to automate mundane and repetitive tasks. 
And so with Magical, instead of sifting through incomplete or unrelated results, Magical can scrape potential contractors directly from LinkedIn. So here's how it works. First, we start by visiting LinkedIn, a platform that has a ton of different contractor profiles that would match our criteria. And so what I've done here is I've gone ahead and looked at four different profiles in LinkedIn that match our criteria for the SEO role. And next, we can use Magical to extract the relevant information like their skills, experience, and their contact details. Now, if I toggle on Magical here, as you can see, it's already pulling a lot of the information from this person's profile. So if I click on this pencil icon, you'll see that it's already highlighted a number of things that might be relevant to me. For instance, I can also use the enrichment feature to get their email like we saw with Llama. However, I can do this on an individual basis and it's more than likely going to be more accurate as I scrape directly from LinkedIn. And so you can see we have their first name, company name, and a little bit of information about them here. If I wanted to add additional information, I could easily just hover over different areas. So let's say I wanted to add another item to the experience tab. I could click here and then type in experience and add it. Now, I'm not gonna do that here because I think Magical did a great job already scraping the information that is required. So I'm gonna click on done and then I'm going to activate the automation feature. And this is where Magical truly shines in automation. So let's say I want to create a new spreadsheet with the, all the tabs that I have open up here. I can click add to new spreadsheet. And with this automation, I can click on all tabs and add all of their profiles directly into the spreadsheet in real time. And you're actually seeing it populate here in real time as well. You may need to clear up anything that is beyond what you is required. And then there you have it. I'm gonna make this a bit bigger. So there it is. I have their, their information all well organized into a spreadsheet that I can share with someone, especially if I'm using something like Google Sheets or an Excel, and I have all the information here ready to go, which is something that the other AI models did not have. So this is one of the reasons why I would use Magical, right? So rather than spending hours manually browsing profiles or getting inconsistent results from other AI models, Magical automates the entire process efficiently and accurately. And so if you're serious about leveraging automation for tasks like these and more, you definitely wanna check out Magical and see what it can do and check the link below to try it out for yourself. Anyway, let's get back to the video. Okay, so it's time to turn the heat up a notch and evaluate how accurately each AI model can analyze and identify objects within a provided image. So we're gonna upload this image here into Magi and it's gonna take some time to upload here. And what we're gonna do is see if these AI models can identify objects in it and if I can call upon it to do some analysis. Okay, so for our first runner up, we have chat GPT 4.0, which identified the KFC in the left-hand corner of the image, as well as the Pinko slot that is on the right-hand side. So I'm pretty impressed by that. It also identified the text notifying that this is in Japan, which it is. And it also identified that there are people, buildings, electric power lines, billboards, a motorbike and a bus. So let's just look at the image and really just kind of analyze and see if this is true. So we do have that bus all the way in the uh, far distance there. So that's really awesome. I don't necessarily see a motorbike, so I'm not sure where it pulled that from, but we do have the KFC here and the Pinko slot here, as well as people in this area. So it also noticed the, the electrical lines that are moving through it. So I'm actually thoroughly impressed with this image. Okay, so it took me a number of tries to actually get Claude to work with me here. I think you have to use the top tier version of Claude, the Opus version, to be able to get any responses. So it does identify that there are power lines crisscrossing above the street, just like ChatGPT did. It is able to also analyze that there's Japanese and English throughout the image. I do think it's a great synopsis, but I do think that ChatGPT was just a bit more detailed without me having to prompt it to be more detailed. Okay, so in looking at Gemini's output, it is able to identify that this is Tokyo, Japan. It says there are many people walking in both directions, so it's able to identify faces and people's backs, because how else would it know that people are walking in opposite directions? Language buildings, lots of electrical wiring. So majority of them were able to identify those wires which I'm actually impressed with since they're very thin. It identifies that there are signs in Japanese, most of them advertising businesses, selling games, electronics, and DVDs. Okay, so 
based on what I see here with Magi, uh, Meta's Llama is not able to identify images if I look at the vision tab here. So I'm going to have to give it to ChatGPT because it did a phenomenal job with identifying different aspects of the image like the KFC and the store on the right hand side along with many different other components. I'm going to give it a, a score of 4 and I'm going to follow that with Claude Opus. Although it did take a bit of fiddling around, I think it was a bit more descriptive than Gemini. So Gemini would follow after and then Llama of course. I'm going to actually give it zero points because it, it's not able to identify images at all at this present time. Okay, so last but not least, we have the scorchingly hard prompt where we are to design and code a simple landing page to showcase a new business. So I've gone ahead and added the prompt in and off the bat, I'm using the software developer persona. So I was able to copy this code and we're going to input it into a display area so that we can see what the website would actually look like with this HTML. As you can see, it's pretty standard. I can't say that this is the most fantastic website. Obviously, we don't have images that we can add in here because it needs to pull it from a database, which we don't currently have. But for the most part, having just the schedules, uh, instructor profiles and membership plans and the form, ChatGPT has nailed it. What I did notice is that if I click on the header elements, it does navigate down the page directly to it. So it does have these section IDs. So it labeled the section ID for class schedule as schedule. And in the header, it labeled the link, the href link to navigate down. So as you click it, it navigates down to it. So that, that was pretty fantastic. All right, so we have the output from Sonnet. Let's see what this looks like when it's rendered. So this is a stark difference here comparing Claude and ChatGPT, as you can see, this isn't fancy. In fact, they don't even have a header section included. If I were to click instructor, these don't go to anything. They don't navigate down the page and the form is not styled well with proper margins and padding as you would typically see a form. It does have information here for like a, a slight header, but I don't think this is what we're looking for. So Gemini also outputted something that looks pretty substantial. Um, what I noticed with Gemini is that it actually gives an explanation into the structure of the website. And this is good for someone who might not be familiar with HTML and CSS. So it's giving kind of like an instructional basis. This would be great if uh, you have absolutely no clue what's going on and this may still be not the best for you here. So what I can appreciate about Gemini here is that it does look a lot more like a website similar to ChatGPT. In fact, it also added placeholders for images so that I choose to apply it. If I was like on a WordPress website, I can pull from the database and add the instructor's image here, which is great. ChatGPT did not have that, but that is substantial. The form looks great. Let's see if it navigates. Yep, it also has the IDs in the sections. Okay, Llama's turn. This looks pretty substantial as well. It added sections and also added the IDs as well as you can see here with a header. So already doing a lot better than Claude. It didn't give as much background information into the structure, but it did mention that it did not include any CSS code. So you will have to create a separate CSS file in the styles.css and link it to the HTML file. So let's go and see what it output it here. Okay, so taking a look at Llama's output here, instantly you can tell that it doesn't have a header or a footer. That is, you know, more so what we are common with with websites. It's pretty standard. And so not having that, it looks a little bit old school. But what I can appreciate is that these still do navigate down the page. So it does have the ID and classes in there. It does have a sort of a table outline here for the class schedule. So it's easier to read than just having the text like I believe ChatGPT had initially. And again, you can see you have your image placeholders. Everything seems to be fine as far as like padding is well spaced out. The form is not as pretty as it was with uh, Gemini and ChatGPT. Okay, so if I was to award scores for this particular prompt, I'm going to go with Gemini at number four, and then I'm going to go with ChatGPT with a score of three. And then following that, I'm going to go with Llama at two. And I'm not even sure I want to award a point, but I will award a point because it did satisfy the prompt. So I'll give one to Claude. Now, every AI model has its strengths and weaknesses, and these companies are constantly improving at rapid rates. I know I get excited when I learn of all these new automation capabilities of these AI models. And uh, speaking of automation, click here to watch our videos on utilizing these models for everyday tasks.